And well, as far as well, myself is concerned, I've also been involved so much in the professional organization, like IEEE, well, for over a quarter of a decade. And you also need to do the balance well, between the full-time job and the volunteer job. And frankly, well, I, I, read, I, I retired early because I have been involved more and more with like, volunteer work. And come to the point that I, I can decide that well, I can well, have an early retirement. Well, financially, I, I'm quite okay. So I enjoy my time as well, but I also enjoy my freedom. I can spend more time with the voluntary organization. So coming to the writing, the first thing is, well, maybe you write, well, your research proposal. And especially, I'm, I'm targeting this one to the student. You really have a lot of opportunity to start writing because of when you're looking for a position or admission for your postgraduate study, the first question you need to write is your admissions. That is a proposal you need to write. So it's not unlike an undergraduate student, okay? Undergraduate student, where well, you just seem to take it on, you take all the courses. But when you're admitted as a full-time research student, you're working in the, uh, independently. So you need to have a well-planned or working uh, research proposal. So as a supervisor, it's able to work with you. But once you started, well, our university require you to have this, what we call confirmation of candidature. There's again a lengthy proposal document. That is a more or less like a contract. You agree to what to work on and how long you're gonna work on and your expected outcomes as well. So we're gonna take a look at the structure of the proposal very shortly. So when you are planning for further study, in particular for research, and then also maybe you're looking for scholarship as well. So in our university, well, this is a, a, um, a, just part of the write-up. But before you apply to complete well, a research degree, you must make you eligible to apply. What it means is, well, we do expect certain expectations of the undergraduate. In particular, you must have gone through the honors or equivalent honor degree in Australia. What it means is, well, you have gone through the research training uh, as part of the course, and also you have a project which is quite substantial. In our case, if a student coming up from honor degree, uh, honor year, well, he should have one project equivalent to one semester work. You must find a potential supervisor. Now you can write to the supervisor and see that uh, you must first of all do the background research work well, on the supervisor. Is he or she working in the area you intend to work on? Well, don't just simply well, write to the supervisor asking, can you take me on? But if, without even knowing well, what is the supervisor we're working on. The supervisor take you on is a responsibility to three to four years. Uh, well, I heard some management saying that if a student fail, well, they consider it's a supervisor's failure because the supervisor has not been doing his or her job properly. Therefore, the student will uh, go through the uh, examination process while in the PhD thesis, fail. Okay, that's how we look at it. So that's why it is very important well, for the supervisor to know that, well, is he or she having the confidence you're going to complete? Okay, so you must have a dialogue well, with him or her. But don't just write to him or her and saying that oh, you want him or her to take you on. Don't say it like that. You must first of all uh, find out well, what is his or her interest and see that what you want to do, uh, whether to fit into well, the agenda or the research interest. Then you see that it's a possibility to explain uh, why you want. Don't write in such a way saying that, well, can you take me on as a student? Because well, the supervisor cannot just simply admit you like this. Okay, sometimes I feel annoyed that the student will write to me without even doing the basic homework. So you need to write an expression of interest form, and then you need to write your research proposal. This is the one I'm talking about. This is the first part of academic writing you might have to. But of course, go back to the fundamentals. So where do you find the research topic? So there are generally two ways. Well, you can propose the topic yourself, or maybe you can discuss with the supervisor, see what is the area they're working on. They have some specific, well, smaller project, then maybe you can see how well you can fit into that. And you can discuss, well, with your, Supervisor at the earliest stage, they will be able to let you know whether it's workable or not. But most importantly, you must read a lot, okay? You must read a lot about the topic, about the papers, about articles, and also find out those papers from the potential supervisor. Read their papers first, okay? So that well, otherwise, well, you do not have some idea what is the problem all about. You must immerse yourself in the journal articles. You must have a single research question. You need to be specific. A lot of times students go into two extremes. One is either too simple, too trivial. Well, we consider it's not really worth it. You're going to spend a couple of years researching to that. And then one is just too advanced or maybe too ambitious. There's no way you can do it in three years time. So you need to be much more specific. 
how do you know this? Read the papers, read the papers, read the papers. You can read other papers, you know how to frame it. And also read the thesis. That's why I introduced you. You can download other people's thesis, take a look how the whole thing is being framed. And then you need to have a flexible approach. Well, having said that, you can make a proposal. It does not mean that you need to fix to that forever. Take myself as an example. Actually, I started off in my research with some topics. I spent eight months in that, and eventually I have to change it. But it's, all the time is not wasted, although I changed the research question, but the, the techniques I have learned along the way actually is still applicable. And I'm still using well for my remaining 20, 30 years of career. And you must also stay up to date as well. See what is the recent development in the area? Because well, everything is advancing so quickly. So you must ensure your idea is achievable, if it's feasible, and not already been uh, uh, addressed. Of course, you can only do the best you can because there's no way you can read every paper under the sun. So you just simply have to be well, um, uh, faithful, uh, I mean, to be true. Well, I would say that if you come to the first stage of the um, uh, candidature after six months, you must be really at least 100, 150 papers have gone through in detail re regarding the topic. And maybe you have read an equal number, maybe even more of the papers which are irrelevant. So that's what I would expect. So you must be essential, you must work together with the potential supervisor right from the very beginning. Then this, I'll give you some examples. Right? In our university, if you apply for as an international student, note that well, actually we do well, take the admissions and the scholarship together at the same time. You do not need to apply well, separately. So we just consider all the conditions, then we we'll take a look well, if it's good enough for, for uh, admissions. And then if you're applying for scholarship, then we we'll put you together in the pool. So, the first thing you well, you have gone through all the basic things, all the basic information, the different type of degree as well, from the PhD to also a lot of the professional or postgraduate degree as well. But more importantly, you need to write this research proposal. If you can see that, well, you need to have a research topic. In this case, well, your topic, your, th your proposal may be only 300 to 500 words. You have to answer, give a summary of what you try to do, a summary of the research aims. What is the likely research question? Okay, you may not be able to, to consolidate the overall research question at that point, but at least you indicate well, what you have done, well, what you're interested in. And also at that point, well, if you have already contacted your potential supervisor, maybe you should really have some kind of agreement with him or her. And then what is the um, possible outcome? That is very important. Well, you haven't done anything yet, but you should expect well, what should be the outcome as well. You may, may not be able to get it, but well, you should get it well because you're going to spend some time in it. But you need to have it beforehand. You just like building a house. I always use this analogy. Well, we always say building a house, you build it twice. The first thing is well, you build on a piece of paper, on a plan. You write out all the details. You drop out well, what material you're going to use, what is the dimension. So in your mind, nowadays, of course, we've got a 3D CAD well, app where we can even well, visualize it with, with, with those of 3D uh, illustration. And then you start building it. Then you have the physical brick and mortar being built. Saving apply to your research work. Well, before you start, you know what is the research question. You want to aim to achieve, what you aim to solve. Then you have to ex ex explain how are you going to do it and what is the expected outcomes. Of course, you, you may not get extent, extent outcomes because sometimes the result is not what you expect to be. But nevertheless, well, you should know well, what you're looking for. And then uh, once you start the, your study after being admitted, you have a confirmation of the candidature. And I look at the number of words now is increased to 3,000 to 4,000 words. This one is much more comprehensive because we expect a student has gone through six months full-time study for, for this research. And really when you consider, well, a PhD study for three to four years, spending six times, well, um, six times, well, six months full-time, you're really looking at at least around 16, well, percent of the time, up to 20% of the time well, on this work alone. So it's quite comprehensive. So we expect you go through all the other well, aspects as well. Then the structure of your research proposal to have your introductions, which is a brief overview of what is your project all about. What is the background? So what other people have done? What is the theoretical and fundamental questions well, you're looking at? What is significant? It's very important. You need to know well, what's so special about your work, why you want to solve this problem. And then what is the methodology? How are you going to solve this problem? Okay, you haven't got any results yet. You must also be able to visualize well, what is the potential limitations of your work as well. So don't just simply uh, overblow it too much. Uh, I see sometimes that people want to 
talk about it, it's just like what well, you show significant is better than butter and bread. Quite unlikely you have an undergraduate who is able to do that. I'm not saying 